hey there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, an eraser puzzle. Well, this is a fun little project that you can do on your scroll saw. And a while back, I had a viewer contact me and say, Hey, Kenny, have you ever thought about doing an eraser puzzle on your show? And honestly, I had no clue what he was talking about. So I looked it up. And they are these fun puzzles that are a, uh, some two-dimensional geometric shapes that when you put them all together in a certain way, it makes a three-dimensional shape. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to make a six-piece eraser puzzle. And it all starts off with some layout over at the bench. In order to make these puzzles, you need to know how to lay out the pieces. So I'm going to show you here how to lay it out, and we will go from there. What you need is you need a block of wood, it needs to be square, and you need to be able to divide it equally four sections by four sections. Those sections have to be equal to the thickness of your material. So this block of maple here I have is three quarters of an inch thick. And what we're going to do is divide it into sections that are three quarters by three quarter inch grid across our piece of maple. So it's three quarters plus another three quarters is an inch and a half. And then we will rotate it 90 degrees and do the exact same thing from this end. And there we have it, our four by four grid. Now you want to do this on six pieces of stock. So we have three inches by three inches by three quarters of an inch thick, and we have divided it into four by four squares. Do that on six pieces, and then I will show you how to do the layout. Well, piece number one is simple enough but it is actually only three by four squares. So we will just cut out this section here, across and up, and then we will bring it down and finish off with these bottom sections to look something like this. Piece number two will utilize the entire three by three block. It will start up here, come along, we will bring it down and across, and then finish it off by ending on this bottom corner. So your pattern for this one, piece number two, should look like this. Piece number three will have this section here right across. It will include this corner block, these two blocks here, and this one for a final shape of this. Now piece number four is kind of funny because it resembles kind of an abstract number four. So we will bring it down with these three sections, these two, all of these, and then finish it off with this one here. So kind of a backwards number four, and it looks like this. Now piece number five is again quite simple, as they all are. It will include all four of these, the two middle ones here, all four of these, and then the bottom corner, just like that. And you will end up with a pattern or a piece that looks like this. And the very last piece in our puzzle is simple enough. It will include these two, these two, all of this row and this little guy right up here in the corner and you'll end up with something that looks just like this piece. So at this point in time now what you want to do is cut all six of your blocks. 
you'll see here that I have several different species just to make it a little more interesting. I have two maple, two mahogany, I have one walnut, and I threw in a chunk of oak in there. We're going to mark out and lay out all of our puzzle pieces just as I showed you, and then we're going to head over to the scroll saw. Well, at this point, I would suggest going around and marking all of your waste areas in your pieces. So this is piece number two. I've marked it for that. So I'm just going to gray out or scribble in the areas that need to be cut out for piece number two. That way we don't have any confusion at all when it comes time to cut them over at the saw. There we go. So this is piece number two. We will mark out all of our other ones and then I'll see you over at the scroll saw. So over here at the scroll saw, I have a number seven reverse tooth blade installed in my saw. And the very first thing you want to do is you want to check it for square. This should pretty much be how you start any day working on any tool, checking your blades or your equipment to make sure that it's set up. And yes, we are nicely square there. So I can move on and start cutting the pieces. So this isn't rocket science. You just want to follow along on all of your pieces, cutting away the waste area to end up with your final puzzle piece. So I've been having a lot of people ask me about the speed of my scrolling. I don't need to scroll quickly. So I'm gonna cut this one piece here in real time and then well, I'll see you at the end. I'm noticing a lot of flex in this blade front to back, which tells me that the tension is off. So I'm just gonna release it at the bottom blade retention holder, or the blade holder, and retighten again.
And there you go. There is piece number four cut. I'm going to cut all the rest of the pieces now. And then when I get all of that done, I'm going to see you over at the bench. Don't forget to check your tension along the way to make sure that you haven't uh, loosened your blade at some point in time and let the saw do the cutting. I'm using all hardwood for these pieces, uh, oak, maple, walnut, mahogany. So let the blade do its job and don't put too much pressure on that scroll saw blade. Well, with all of our pieces cut, we're going to erase our pencil lines here and give each piece a good sanding. As well, I am going to burn the number of each piece on each one of the puzzle pieces. That way, with the solution, it'll make sense because you'll know which piece is which. Well, just for the heck of it, I've got a piece of three quarter inch plywood here. And what I've done is I've cut it to three and a sixteenth by three and a sixteenth. Then I've taken some scrap walnut and I've cut a little frame to go around this. And the frame is uh, seven eighths of an inch wide, which gives a little one eighth of an inch lip all the way around our frame sort of thing. So I'm going to glue this up and clamp it in a frame clamp and we'll set this aside to dry. And as always guys, don't forget to clean up your squeeze out. And once your little tray is dry, give it a good sanding and then uh, your project is pretty much done. And there you have it. A wooden eraser puzzle. Guys, this project could not be simpler. And with Christmas coming just around the corner, what a great stocking stuffer. What a fun little gift to give to the young ones or you know what, even the adults on your gift list. This is a challenging puzzle. Uh, speaking of which, don't worry about it. If you stay tuned to the very end, I will give you the solution. I just did not want to give a spoiler for those of you who wanted to cut it and try it yourself. Guys, this project was more fun than what I should be allowed to have. And what a fantastic way to use up scrap stock. Check your wood rack or your wood bin, or however, however you store your offcuts, how many three quarter inch thick, small little squares or pieces do you have sitting in there that you have no use for? This is a perfect use for them. I, you can use whatever finish you want. If you wish to give it a, a shinier finish, then go ahead and do that. For me, the little bit of Danish oil was just fine. And it really brought out the colors of the wood, and I love it when it does that. Guys, this project is one of those things that really lends itself not only to the fun of making it, and then the fun of giving it, but the fun of watching someone use their mind and, and figure out that puzzle to sit there for an extended period of time and be able to work it out to form the cube here that it should be. Trust me, it's a lot harder than what you think. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning into the show this week. This has been a lot of fun. Again, like I said, a great way to use up scrap, a great way to make it an easy gift for somebody. And you know what? You've tuned in this far, guys. Um, by the time this airs, I will have had a PDF pattern for this made up. If you guys would like that pattern and like it emailed to you, feel free to drop me either an email. Um, the email address is on the, the channel bio. You can send a message on the channel's Facebook page. Whichever way you choose, 
I would be more than happy to send the PDF of this puzzle to you. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're going to try this for yourself. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's content. And more importantly, I hope you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another woodworking video. Okay, I'm not going to leave you hanging any longer. Let's get over here. I'm going to show you guys how to solve that puzzle. So if you don't want to see the solution, stop this show right here and now. Well, here we go with the solution of the puzzle. And the first piece that you want is your piece number one, and it will sit there in this configuration. You then want to take the number two piece and it will slide right in there like that. Then taking your number three piece, that will slide right in and form the corner there of our puzzle. Now you want to take piece number five, sit it like so, sorry, sit it like so, and that will get pushed in just like that. Your next piece that you want is piece number six, and piece number six will get oriented just like this, and it will slide right into this spot here. And the very last piece that you want is number four. And number four, well, I'm sure you can see where it goes. That just sits right there. And there you have it. There is your puzzle completed. Thanks for watching, guys.